Alright guys, super quick one today. This is not really worth a full video. Here I have two zoom demands. And yeah, they look pretty similar, but they're completely different zoom demands. This one is a lank zoom demand. So it has a 2.5 millimeter lank cable to go with that one. And it works off the lank protocol. It also has a switch on the side and a start stop trigger. And you got your wired and telly and it clamps onto your tripod handle. It's very cheap. It's like $25 Australian. Um, and yeah, like they both feel really cheap, but this one in actual like actuation also feels really cheap. That may be because of the Lank protocol. The Lank protocol has a certain amount of steps for zoom speed rather than like a gradual um, linear, what do you call it? A granular, um, an infinitely variable speed. <laughs> uh, Lank has actual set zoom speed steps rather than, yeah, that completely variable zoom speed that a broadcast camera has. So that's a Lank one. This is the one I was actually wanting to talk about instead. This is just so like, when you're looking, you don't get confused. You don't buy a Lank one. We need one of these, um, which has a eight pin on it, which goes into the bottom of your broadcast lens that has a um, servo zoom. And then it looks very similar. You've got the same zoom rocker, but it um, has much finer control and much, yeah, it just feels a lot better. Not as good as the genuine Fujinon and Canon uh, zoom demands. They are like obviously king. They cost way more. But yeah, this one will actually work on your Fujinon and Canon uh, cameras with servo zooms. And it's like $120 to $200. I got mine for $120, I'm pretty sure. Um, these Lank ones that are just very, very average, very le less than average, are about $20, $25. Uh, yeah, so this one is 125 to 200 ish dollars, depending on where you get it, when you get it, what colors it is, type thing. But yeah, it fixes by a very similar mechanism. Um, you've got your start stop trigger if your camera is hooked up to your servo zoom by the 12 pin high rows and has um, the start stop trigger for your camera, or if it's a native um, B4 camera. Um, and then on the side you've got C and F, that's for Canon and Fujinon. That's because their zoom protocols are slightly different. So yeah, just pop it on the right one for your uh, specific thing. Um, but yeah, this one, like for how much less it costs than a genuine zoom demand, uh, it works really well. And um, if I haven't shown already, I'm gonna show some, um, some footage of using the zoom demand on the actual camera. This is actually really hard to film my plug and stuff in. Yeah. You got the eight pin a pin thing there uh, to note this is not a locking one um, the genuine ones lock on those threads but anyway it's in all right we're all hooked up lens is powered we're on C power viewfinder yeah. go in there to see image we're in black balance because we don't need that. And James hasn't focused the camera. Uno momento, por favor. That's... Let's focus on the lens. Oh, flip. Come on, focus your damn phone. There we go. So we can do like really slow zooms. Actually, we can go slow on that. Let's go slow, push in. Go 
pixel on that. Super slow zoom. We are moving though. We're still zooming. Look at the edges. Crash zoom. Crash out. So yeah, you can do your slow zooms, you can do your medium zooms. I'm not very practiced with this unit. Um, the genuine ones are a bit easier to get used to, but this will get you out of a pinch for most things. So there we are zooming. This is the um, J11 by 4.5, by the way. So that's the wide angle. Um, if you've got any questions, drop them down below. I might pop a link to just a 8-pin um, um, servo uh, zoom demand uh, for those that want it. Um, if you can afford a genuine Canon or Fujinon one for your specific lens, they are much better. But if you're um, a peasant like me, um, this can do while you're saving up for those more expensive ones. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you on the next one.